Right then. So it's officially day two. Yep, yep. Yeah. Quite a busy day. Um, so yesterday, you agreed to take part in Nobleman Lord Silver Lash's request to go on a hunt for the great black beast of the black jungles to the south. You survived an encounter with the figure, and you are now in possession of his belongings. Which I think uh, Tarbin has. Most of it, yeah. Yep. Uh, so Vargo burned down an entire side of the Arrowhead Inn. Good old Tarb uh, Savargo. Hank has hired a woodworker to start repairs, which are being carried out today. Uh, the party met with Hilda, and a small dwarf lady, at the harbour master's office, who has arranged for them to meet Captain Mode, as long as they take some cargo on her behalf, along with the with them, the party. Law has been warned that there is a bounty on her head, and the celebration of the sails took place, marking the official opening of Waterdeep's Harbour after the winter break. And so let's begin day two. Um, if I recall correctly, I got a tiny bag of some kind of powdery substance. You got a bag of sand, which when you put on the floor, not the bag, when you like spilt some of the sand on the floor, it moved of its own accord even against the wind, the direction the wind was blown. And you could tell that was was happening because the smoke from the fire was going one way, but the sand was moving the other. So it looked like it had a, a place it wanted to go. I don't know if that refreshes mm -hmm. your memory. Uh, yeah, it does a bit, yeah. But um, I also, yeah. Yeah, you have a fang. Uh, you found a coin which had a worn out engraving of the world serpent on it. Uh, mm -hmm. And, I think and have... a vial of brown licorice. Yeah. Le brownish liquid. Yeah. You've... And a pouch with five gold that I gave to somebody who gave it back to uh, Hank. That's Savargo, right. I think. You get, yeah, you gave it to Savargo, and Savargo gave it to Hank. To yeah, no, I, 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 I've written this down. Just, I was. Um... I was thinking about the the pouch with the fine sand. Is it would it be possible for me to spend some time with it and figure out what it actually is? Uh, during the night. Uh, during the morning, actually. During the morning. Okay. Yeah, that's that's no problem. Um. So you're actually all woken up. It's 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 early dawn. And like the crest of the sun is starting to, to come up. And you you all wake up because you can hear. Prayer. So what you can hear, you're not too sure at the moment, Tarbin. Uh, and when you wake up, you can't even see armor. You're not sure where armor is. Um, if I wake up and uh, I <laughs> is is Laura and uh, Zavago there? You don't even see Law or Zavago. You're in the room where you all sort well. You all fell asleep in separate rooms, but uh, no, sorry, you didn't. You all fell asleep I in Armour's room. Yeah, We're that's right. Same room. So you, you've woken up, and you're the only one left in this room. Um, you look around, and some of the you know Armour's beds neatly been remade. Uh, Law's belongings have, have been taken. Savargo's belongings aren't there either. So you're just in this room by yourself now. Well, that's inconvenient. Uh... I I just I'll pack up my stuff and uh, get out to see what the fuss is about with the praying. Okay, so as you leave and you come into the courtyard, you see there's just a whole load of people here. There's monks, there's paladins, there's clerics, and they're all facing east towards the sunrise, and they're all in prayer together. And as you look on, you can see that armor's there as well, and he's joining in with the the morning prayer to the sun. This is a, a ritual that happens every morning as they pray towards the dawn, which is the symbol of Lathander, which is the the god that Armour follows. All right. Uh, uh, I 
guess um, since I've, I've traveled a bit with with Arma, I, I guess that I would actually know that his deity is that of the sun. So, and since they're worshipping towards the sunrise, I would guess that that would make sense. Um, so that means I know what's going on. Uh, I'll just take my time with the bag now then, while waiting for Arma. Okay. And, and real quick, uh, Lathander is the god of the dawn, not always just the sun. Uh, it's more of the god of Kind of like new beginnings and um, oh, fair enough. And right. giving life, but ju just a quick clarification. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so describe what you're going to do with the bag. Um, I assume there's some. I mean, I assume that there would be some kind of way of figuring out magical stuff because I mean, obviously, this sand is of a magical nature. So I assume you can that do there would be some uh, kind of procedure. You can do an arcana check to. To see. Mm, okay. That would be a ten. So yeah, your initial feelings are right. There is something possibly magical about this sand. Uh, it doesn't radiate any glow. It doesn't make any sound, and it doesn't have any smell. And in fact, when you smell it, it just smells like like normal sand, but you've seen it move of its own accord. You know there isn't something entirely normal about this sand. And there is no kind of any keywords or anything on the bag? No, it's just a plain bag. No keywords, no markings. It just looks like a normal bag that you'd probably be able to buy from any stall across uh, Faerun. Um, does it look like when I take something out of the bag that it's it's slowly becoming empty? So if, if I mean if I experiment enough with it, I will actually use up the sand. Um, go ahead and try and use some of the sand. Sure, I'll I'll I'll, I'll try to use some of the sand. Okay, so as you do, you throw it on the floor. Uh, yeah, I, I, I sprinkle it between my fingers, and uh, because I, I saw that it, um, the dust somehow floats in a particular direction, I want to see if I change places if it's always towards the same direction. Okay, so as you sprinkle this dust finally through your your fingers, and it it sort of scatters loosely on the floor, it comes back together in in a trail, and it heads off into the same direction you saw the sand head off yesterday, which is towards the east. I see, I see. But, um, and if I do this like, you know, two, three times, do I feel the bag getting lighter? You do notice the bag getting lighter. So the bag isn't replenishing it's not, itself. All right. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Then I, uh, I put the bag aside. But each time that you did it, the sand always sort of came back together forming a trail off towards the same direction, which was towards the east. Yeah, I'm going to need more information before I start experimenting with that, because I don't know how far east the uh, collection point of that sand is. OK. So I guess I just wait for armor to finish. Yeah, you've, you've been spending adventure. a good like five, ten minutes playing with this sand, weighing it over in your mind. and. These monks, you know, these disciples of Lathander have been praying since the crack of dawn and the sunrises actually came up now. And it, the sun's blasting a, a good morning across the, the clear skies, across water deep. And the monks, the paladins and the clerics slowly start to get to their feet. And uh, you see that armor's standing there. He's talking to what looks like to be a human cleric. Yeah. I'll go stand at a uh, suitable distance yet visible to Arma so he, he sees me if he needs me. Uh, as I'm talking to this man, I, I notice Tarbin and I just say over to him, Tarbin, Tarbin, good to see you. Come, come here, I'd like to introduce you to someone. I'll walk up then. And uh, what, what does this guy look like? He's a he's a 
human cleric. Uh, he's quite, he's quite uh, just normal looking, normal playing. And, and of all the things, he has like one of them trademark male patent baldness of a monk on the <laughs> crown of his head, of his dark hair. Okay. Uh, Tarbin, this is this is Adamaros Pegasen, the Morning Lord. He is the, oh, he's he's the head of our order of uh, all the the monks and the clerics and the paladin. This is who we all look up to and aspire to be like. He talks to Lethander for us and shares his message for those who can't hear it for themselves. And just a wonderful man. And uh, Adamaros, this is Tarbin. I traveled with him. When I came up here uh, a couple of weeks ago from Daggerford, and then we met up again uh, at, at that dinner I, I was telling you about, that I went to to see what we uh, when I went there to see what Lathander wanted me to do, and we will be traveling together for a good while, and I figure you two should meet. Greetings, I am honored. I am also honored. Your accent. Where are you from? I am from Kalimshan. Ah, I have been there before. Not too far from where I grew up. Oh, where did you grow up? Uh, I'm afraid that place is gone now. But it was a little bit north of Callum's port. Oh, was it some kind of legendary place? <laughs> no, just a small village. It was, I hear, after I left, ravaged by orcs. Yes, we have uh, we have had dealings with the best types. Mm, the dawn does not shine on the orcs. No, and if it did, I'm sure the dawn would regret it. <laughs> I'm sure they would. Their skin does not like the light. So Ahmed tells me you are traveling together. Is it on a pilgrimage? Uh, I'm not sure what Arma has told you, but I, uh, <laughs> I can only speak for myself when I say I'm I'm not really on a pilgrimage as much as I am on a uh, on an adventure. Adventures are just as important as pilgrimage. You find a lot about yourself. Oh, I wholeheartedly agree. You must be used to travel if you have come all the way from Kalanspot. It is a uh, fairly recent hobby, but yes, I have been traveling for uh, more than a year now, I think. And tell me, on your travels, have you noticed a lack of kindness? Not in my vicinity, no. Have you noticed a lack of openness from people? Hmm... Yeah, sometimes, but I have only assumed that since people travel on the road, it's fairly dangerous and people like to keep to themselves. That is a fair assumption. There is talk that dark times are coming and that people are not being as open and as friendly as they used to be. Oh, uh, how come? Uh, do they talk about any particular reason for this? Oh, they give no reason. It's just, you can sense a change in people the more you are around them. And there are people we have known and people that we do not know. But yet, they all seem the same. They all seem to have less openness and kindness in their lives. It's our duty as disciples of Lathander to make sure that luck, kindness, openness is spread to many, not just people who believe in Lathander, but those who don't even know about him. Amen, Father. Wise words. So be aware on your travels, and I'm sure Brother Armour will help you here, of people who you think may be coming under the darkness. 
We shall stay vigilant. He gives a little nod, and he... As does Tarbin. And he walks away to, uh... Back inside. But before he totally goes out of sight, he turns around and goes, Arba, please, remember, your friends are open for breakfast. It is just a humble breakfast, but please, make sure they eat with us before you go on your travels. Of course, it would be our pleasure. And I look forward to having more discussions from you when... Or with you when we return from this uh, this journey. Well, make sure you come back here before you go. I might have a need for you. Or should I say, Vanda well. might have a need for you. Very well. It shall be done. And he turns and he walks back towards the building. Well, Tarbin, are you hungry? Should we... Uh... Eat this breakfast before we uh, set out on whatever the day has for us? Yes, yes, let's. Um, what does the day have for us? I understand you uh, agreed to do some kind of work for them? Yes, I think we need to help prepare for this this or this or uh, festival that will be happening. And then I assume we should meet with the uh, Captain Mode and see if we can secure a passage. Yes, quite. Okay. But first, let's eat. Let's. So you walk into the building where you saw um, Adomaris from Pegasus walk into, and it's it's like a grand open space with with long with two long rows of of wooden tables. They're not grand. They're not spectacular. They're just normal wooden tables that you'd find anywhere. And there's wooden benches running alongside them, and they're slowly starting to fill up with with members of the order who are starting to tuck into their breakfast. On each wooden table there's a small collection of bread, milk, a little bit of fruit, and there is a member of the order who's just going around asking if people would like some porridge or a bit of salted deer. I go and sit down at one of the tables close to the door where there's a couple open seats. Yes, I, uh, I'll sit with armor. Okay, so as you sit down, you some other members of the order come and sit next to you, and they give you a a nice, you know, it's a small nod, it's a small welcome, but it's it's a it's a friendly one. Um, and they start to to tuck into their breakfast and talk among themselves. Mm. Uh, as as the, uh, the the server comes around, I I. I... Request some uh, some of the salted deer from him and add that to my breakfast and continue eating. Okay, so he gives you a bit of a salted deer and he and he says, "Dawn be with you, brother Armor." And to you. And uh, I'll um, I'll <laughs> ask for the uh, for some salted deer as well at, at the same time. Dawn be with you too. In fact, I'm not sure we've met. I am Tarban Almok. Don't be with you. Oh, well, don't be with you too, brother Tarban. And he puts some salted deer on your table. And as you start eating, you notice that this really old, decrepit looking human cleric, accompanied by a cleric and a paladin, walks very slowly into the building. He's, he's really old. He's so old that he can barely support his own weight. And he's hunched over, and his two aides, the, the cleric and the paladin, are, are hooking him under the arm, and he's got his arm hooked onto theirs, you know, they're supporting his way and slowly accompanying, accompanying him forward. He really, it looks like you can barely move. It, it looks like that he once probably had like a real grand beard, but like he's so old now that it's really thin and bristly and probably cracks off if it if it's touched too much and he slowly makes his way towards the table and some monks at the top end of the table where he is actually move so it's he can sit down uh i assume that there's a uh, fair amount of uh of murmur in the uh feeding hall like uh people are talking uh yes yes in fairness there is and if you want you can do a a Insight check, armor. Okay. Okay, you actually remember 
something comes back to you from your your studies that that this is the high radiance Athasar. He used to be the the prior to Gentilara, who was the the head of the order of Waterdeep over a hundred years ago. This is a real old man. Um, he's been given like the the title of High Radiance out of courtesy and honor. He he physically can't run the order anymore, and that's why the Morning Lord Adamaris is in charge now. But they have such a respect for this man because he's ran the order for for a long, long time before Adamaris that he's been allowed to keep the title of High Radiance. And I share that information and fill in Tarvin on what I remember about him. All right, good. Thank you. Okay, so yes, there is a murder, a murder, a murmur among the tables, because this is the f murder. This is the first time he's been seen for for a long time. In fact, he's a uh, he very rarely leaves his private chambers, and his aides do a lot of the, the you know the collection of food and stuff for him, and bathe them and change them. So for him to have come down for the morning is is a big deal for the monks. It's 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 almost a cause of celebration. You know, it's lifted their spirits, and they're like, whoa, whoa hey. The High Radiance is here. He's, he's came down and he's having breakfast with us. All right. Now, the reason I asked for the murmur was actually if I could uh, conceal a who is that to armor, but he already told me who it is, so that's good. All right. Okay. <laughs> and you, you hear one of the monks next to you say, Whoa, the High Radiance is here. He hasn't been seen for many days. And the, the one next to him goes, I haven't seen him for months. I wonder... I wonder if he has some news for us. He's been in prayer for all this time. And uh, I say, ooh, I hope, I'm sure he will have some uh, great information to share with us. And maybe this has something to do with what uh, our Morning Lord Pegasus has for me. Yes, it could be, it could be. And you, you see that Morning Lord Pegasus actually, he's got up from his seat and he's, He's humbled and he's walking towards the High Radiance himself. And he's, he says, Don't be with you, High Radiance. And his nod is actually like a bow. It's greater than the nod he gave you. as a, a huge sign of respect. The High Radiance doesn't return the nod. He, like, he physically can't. But you, you do see that there's just like a, a small smile form on his face. As if he's acknowledged the, the greeting. And you hear Morning Lord Pegasus say, I hope your prayers have, sorry, <laughs> I forgot the accent. I hope your prayers have been, have been kind to you. I guess we're uh, silently eating our breakfast and just waiting for something to, to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> although I, I, I will check with Arma. Uh, have you any idea where the uh, the dragonborn and the the thief went? I do not. I woke up very early, and when I woke up, they were still sleeping, and and I figured they would join us when they woke up. But I have not seen them at all today. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Oh, he'll be here soon. There. Hey. Savago. Um, and the High Radiance is like, he's having his part spoon fed into him by one of his aides. And he's just, he's, you know, he's slowly with his gumless, hey, gumless, teethless mouth and his gums just chewing away and slipping away at this porridge. I'm assuming he's not having the deer then. <laughs> no, he'd be, che he'd be chewing on that with his gums for weeks. Hey, Duke. Nothing really. He's here. Oh, he's, he, yeah, he's he's uh, on roll twenty and he's on the thing, but he has muted his mic, so he either he's not there at the moment, or then he forgot that he's muted his mic, which would be funny. I forgot I was muted. Yeah, I started to talk and I forgot I was muted. He's been chatting away the whole time. He already set fire to the monster, you know. No, no. I was listening. I was listening to somebody eat. Apparently. 
That's what I joined in on. That somebody was eating. This decrepit old man sipping down some porridge with his gumless teeth. So he's, he's teeth basically John Paul II towards the end then. Oh, like beyond that. It's like he's like, uh, imagine John Paul II plus the Emperor from Star Wars. He is like really. Oh, badass. <laughs> really, really decrepit. Okay. He's got All like right. he's got like liver spots on his skin, like Mr. Burns, that type of thing, you know. <laughs> oh, so we're still in the monastery then? You're yeah, not. yeah, we we've owned, yeah, you you went here. I am not. <laughs> no, I left. Okay, you left so I'm to, listening. And... Yeah. Okay. You you abandon us, and uh, we'd have no idea where you are. You're probably dead by now. Sounds about right. At least to us. Setting fire okay. to more buildings. <laughs> All right, then I will listen in, and I am tracking. We're good. Okay, so breakfast continues, and there's not much more that happens, really. And Some of the monks have finished, and they start to clear up, and they start to help not just their own table and plates. They start to help with other ones. When suddenly the, the high radiance sort of looks up, And he says, it's like the loudest he's spoken in, in as long as anyone can remember. And he just says, Dark times are coming. Dark times. And his aides sort of look at him a bit shocked and a bit surprised. And then they're not entirely sure what to do. Uh, Ar Armad, what, what, what do you think? Uh, what is happening? Well, this is the wisest man I've ever known, and if he, if he sees, if he saw something, if he realized that darkness is gonna come upon us, and I believe him wholeheartedly, and I don't know what can be done, but I. I, I fear, I fear for what's going to happen. They will eat the dawn. The dawn. The dawn. <sighs> he'll, he'll. No, I, I... <laughs> no he's, he's just like, he's, he's overexcited himself type of thing. And he's like, he starts to, to lean forward back into the, the, the state he was in before. And it, it almost looks, looks like he's falling asleep. His aides hook him under the arm and they start to, to lead him away and even the morning lord lord pegasus himself is is accompanying the high radiance back towards his chambers well that was exciting hmm. yes exciting one of the monks looks at armor this isn't time for jokes this is serious yes yes it is what do you think it means I'm not sure. The dawn being eaten? Dark times? Ah, I just hope the Morning Lord can speak to Lathander soon and get answers. Yes. Yes. So I will, Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, I, I will talk with him uh, later and see if I can get his thoughts on the matter and maybe he can give some insight. I believe he's nodding at you and he's like, I think that's what we're all hoping. There's like a quiet sort of murmuring, hushing talk going between the different monks who are, some of the young disciples are totally, you know, they're shocked, they're not sure what's going on. Some of the older ones are discussing what it could have meant and other monks are just hurriedly getting away and to go to their own private chambers to pray. Yeah, to pray. Well, Tarbin, should we uh, head towards the port and find Captain Mode and hopefully run into our companions? Yes. Yes, let's. Okay, so let's cut to Zavago, who is outside the Arrowhead Inn. He's been helping Hank repair the inn. Hank, this is ridiculous. 
It's got to be done. If we don't get it repaired now, I'm going to miss out on getting the greatest adventurer, the greatest explorer, and the greatest storyteller to come to my inn. I understand that, but does it have to be... Does it have to be this nice? <laughs> what do you mean, this nice? And Hank looks at the the wood that's sort of like... It's not even the same colour. It hasn't been varnished the same. It's like it's come from three different types of trees and the wood's sort of like at angles. It's not even straight panelling. It just... It just feels different, Hank. All right? Of course it's different. It's brand new wood. It doesn't have the greasy smell. It doesn't have the alcohol, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the vomit that all the other wood has gained over the years. <sighs> Whatever. What else do you need from me? Um... All right, if you can... If you can lift that fancy new sign up. And he points to a sign that says the Arrowhead Inn and it has like this, it's a brand new sign and you can clearly tell he spent all the money you've gave him on this sign rather than on wood for the, <laughs> and repair for the, the side of the inn you've burnt down. And he points to the sign, it's, it's, it's a thick oak sign that he wants to be hung above the door. It says the Arrowhead Inn, it's been immaculately carved. I don't know how quickly and well, and how much you must have paid for this to have been carved in the matter of like 12 hours. And it's painted in lavish, sort of gold and tainted colours. If you can lift that sign up above the door, that would be fantastic. You're kidding, right? This sign? This doesn't fit in anywhere here. It's going to stand out like a bacon. What are you selling out to those fools in the castle ward? Oh, no, 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 no. I just want to be the greatest tavern in all of the Dock Ward. Hmm. <clears throat> Fine. You want to attract adventurers, right? Yes. They're not going to come if this thing is as clean and nice and... Yeah, nice as you got this thing. How about this? And he proceeds to scratch it in a few choice places to make it look a little more weathered. Oh, very well, I like that. I like that a lot. Hank mm. gets his muddy boot and he sort of like s scrapes off the mud on one corner of the of the sign. Yes, yes, that looks very nice. There you go. Now, let me see what I can do about getting this up here. Is this a strength check? <laughs> go on, do a, yeah, do a strength check. And the sign's broken. <laughs> oh god so <laughs> you lift the sign up and with all your calm and all your care you try and gently slip this the the metal hoops over the wooden um, support beam that's sticking out for the sign to go on and you get the first sign over the first hoop over the support beam and you're quite pleased with yourself Hmm. And that, that like, that just totally throws you off. And you just slam the second hoop in and you, you snap <laughs> the support beam. Oh, no. See? Uh, uh, you kidding me? These kinds of things, uh, they need to make them easier. So the sign sort of just hanging off at an angle. And it's rocking around. One one support hook is on, the other one is isn't, and the the support beam itself's like half snapped. So it's just hanging there in the wind, sort of just half on, half off. You know, that doesn't look half bad. If you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. Yeah, if it falls on someone's head, and no one's looking, I'll you know I'll make sure their pockets are nice and clean. Hmm. And if anybody tries to give you any trouble about it, just send them to me. Oh, yes, I will. No, no, no problem. So what have you got planned today, Savargo? Guess I better get back to that monastery. Which one? What kind of question is that, Hank? I don't know, some monastery in the castle ward. I got friends waiting. You've got friends in the castle ward? In a monastery? <sighs> Friends, I say friends in a light term. You know what I mean, Hank. The same 
people I had in here yesterday when we burnt down your tavern. Oh, those friends. I see. Yeah, we're supposed to set off today, so I better go meet up with them. Well, don't forget that today is all about the Ocean Bounty Festival. I'll need you to make sure that you, you know, funnel a few people in towards my inn. Don't worry, I haven't forgot. I haven't forgot. And if I see anybody that's looking for a good drink, I'll be sure to send them to the Arrowhead Inn. <laughs> that's why I like you, Savago. <laughs> Okay, so are you heading back off to the uh, to the monastery? Yes. Okay, so you've tra you travel back there, and you've you've been helping Hank all morning, and those events have sort of been happening while the events at the the monastery were happening. So that was like a parallel type of thing. And as you're walking back to meet or to get to the monastery, you actually bump in to Armor and Tarbin as they're walking down Warrior's Way. Oh, perfect. Oh, hello, Savargo. Where have you been uh, this morning? Ah, uh, just helping Hank. Just the two people I was looking to see. Perfect. So what we got going on? Hey, where's the tiny one? No idea. I haven't seen her today. Hmm. All right, then. Well, where are we off to? Well, we're heading down to the port to uh, see if we can find Captain Mode. And then attend the festival and do whatever we can to help the uh, the uh, clerics at the temple. Uh, whatever they need to prepare for the festival. Sounds good. As we start walking, I'm, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Zavargo, So, how is, uh, how is Hank? Is his Ain ready to accept customers now? That seems to be about ready. Looks, it just feels different, you know? Not quite the same charm it had before. I'm sure it will get the same type of charm sooner or later. So as you walk through the streets, you can see that the preparations for the, um, for the Ocean Bounty Festival are are well underway. The, the most of them are already finished. People must have been working well into the late night to get these ready. There's bunting in the streets. There's there's people who have made like makeshift stalls in the street in front of their their shops to make it look more appealing, more attractive. Um, and as you walk down the high road, you can see that the high road has been it's been cleaned, like really, really cleaned, to make way for for the parade and the. The floats that are going to come through there later, which sort of tell a little bit of history, and it's it, you know, and the, the kids make floats that depict their favorite boats over time, and they go up and down the high road as part of the the celebrations. You can see that trade is being delivered among the the, the shops as well. That that's been slowly arriving since the dock reopened, and some of these trades being accompanied by by bodyguards, so it must be very high, high value trade. And you continue walking and people are just getting on with their business, they don't pay you much, much attention at all and you come into the dock ward and it's a little bit different, it's not as clean as the high road was. This is sort of like the people's festival that's going to happen down here. The main festival will happen on the high road and in the market, up in the castle ward, as it always does. Uh, the dock ward sort of has its own version of the of the Ocean Bounty Festival. People just get very drunk, eat a lot, and scraps in the street tend to happen as well. However, it's early morning, so people aren't that drunk yet. Uh, where were we supposed to meet with Captain Maud? <laughs> I take it neither Armour nor Zavargo actually remembers. I'm looking at my notes to see if I wrote it. Cause I, did we? Because we didn't actually set up a meeting, did we? You don't actually know where you meet Captain Maud yet. Yeah. Um, we just said we were supposed to meet yeah. him, so I figured. Hilda uh, has arranged passage on his board for you. 
uh, Russell McGarvin was going to introduce you to Captain Mode. And he said he would meet you at the, the Arrowhead Inn in the morning. And in fact, you're on Snail Street now, which is right next to the Arrowhead Inn. And you can see Russell McGarvin walking out of one of the side streets that leads into the Arrowhead Inn. And he looks a little bit confused because you weren't there. I, I guess we start walking up to him then. Mr. McGarvin. Oh, well, there, there you, there you are. I, I thought I said I'd meet you with the Arrowhead Inn. Uh, Things yes. got complicated. Just, all right, we're here. We're here. It's morning. We met you. Wait a, wait a minute. I'm only counting three adventurers. We, 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 we were looking for four. She is taking care of some uh, personal business at the moment. I see. I see. I see. And he, he's clutching under one arm like this. This bag of stuff. Um, is there somewhere where we can meet that isn't in the middle of the street? Maybe the so, inn? Savargo, was there a lot of people in the Arrowhead Inn yet? Well, not yet. Ain't getting too busy yet. People are still preparing. Then that would probably be the best place to meet. So you make your way to the inn, and you're inside. Um, the floor hasn't really been replaced. You can still see. You can still see the, the crack in the floor where Savargo stamped, down to to try and get rid of the snakes yesterday. Um, there's still, <laughs> he's drawn the burning fire on there. He's um. There's still like the smell of, of burnt wood. So that hasn't quite cleared out yet either, and there's still dampness on the floor from where the water barrel smashed into the floor. Other than that, the normal smells of, of stale alcohol, sweaty people, it's still there. It still sort of smells like the Arrowhead Inn. I'm gonna walk up to Hank and uh, ask for a glass of water. Ah, no. Didn't you learn anything from yesterday? I learned a lot, did you? Yes, that I should start stocking water and charge a bloody fortune for it. There you go. Then I'll just walk away back to the group. <laughs> Clearly he hasn't started stocking the water yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I go sit, out, sit down at a table in the corner. Yes, we'll pick a table in the corner. It's almost as if my tarbon token fits right next to the table. <laughs> it looks like That's the funny. table. I just imagine that the uh, tarbon token is constantly dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot to put a token in for Russell, so you just got to use your imagination. He's sitting on the other seat. He puts the the bag he was clutching under one arm onto the table. He opens it and he puts some he puts the items on. Okay. Okay, here's the, the bag of gold I promised. Puts in this this bag, it goes cluck, 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 as he puts it on the table. <laughs> it sort of like collapses under its own weight a little bit. It's containing a lot of gold. And uh he if uh, can Tarba do an estimation of of what uh, what amounts are we talking about here? Are we talking about a uh, hundred, uh, ten, fifty, a hundred, five hundred? Uh, do a perception check. Uh, you think there's there's probably a little, probably about the the amount of gold he promised to bring you, which was fifty gold, to get you on your way. All right. Uh, he brings out the next item from the bag, which is, which is a map of the jungle. Okay, I I, I spoke to, I spoke to Reginald, and I can't, I can't promise how accurate this map is, but he drew a map of the jungle, so you can familiarize yourself before you get there. I I reach for the map and take it and start looking at it intently. 
I'm just studying it and learning what I can. And he pulls out a uh, these these four small parcels, which he hands, but well, he just puts in the middle of the table. And he goes, and and those are ration packs. They're they're they've got slices of dried meat in there, the cured meat. We've been salting and smoking it for for weeks. It it it, it shouldn't go off between now and the time you get back, but I, it won't last you very long. Only use them if you really need to. Thank you. I take one of the bags or the packs. Thank you, most gracious. Um, I can Thanks. hold on to this one until Lord comes back. And Zavargo starts eating his. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zavargo, I mean, there's plenty of places to eat around here. Shouldn't we save that? Are you telling me to turn down meat that's right in front of my face? We're uh, telling you to, to save it until you actually want it. I actually want it right now. I haven't eaten anything. I don't know about you. This will get exciting. Okay, so, so Russell continues and he goes, Okay, I'm going to introduce you to Captain Mode. He won't set sail tonight, I can tell you that now. He is very, very superstitious. As long as I've known him, as long as I've been doing favors for him, there, there are three things I've come to know about Captain Mode. One, he's superstitious. Like, really superstitious. I don't know where he gets it from. If there's no moon in the night sky, he won't sail. If a cat crosses his path, he won't move until he's kicked the cat. If he walks under a ladder, he won't continue until he's thrown the ladder away. You know, that type of thing. He is just stupidly, stupidly superstitious. Do not, whatever you do, smash a mirror near him. The last time I saw that happen, I'm, I'm still recovering from, from what I saw that night. It was, it was a bloodbath. There, there was a bath filled with blood? That, that's disgusting. He just continues. He doesn't know what to say. He just continues with that. Uh, uh yes, anyway, two. He values, he values gold and honor more than anything else. If you owe him a favor, that's as good as a chest of gold. Number three, don't mention his beard. Is there something extraordinary about his beard? Don't mention his beard. Get used to it. Practice now. Don't ask me questions about his beard. Don't mention his beard. Okay, understood. He gives a little short nod as if, like, good. Okay. Um, uh, Tarba just looks at Zavargo. Mm -hmm. Russell looks at Zavargo as well. Armor just averts his eyes and doesn't really want to look at anybody. Zavargo, how about a small wager? A wager, huh? What are we wagering on? First one to mention the captain's beard to the captain owes the other person five gold. Too easy. I offer my hand to shake on it. Nah, I don't do shakes. He's still munching on his ration pack. But we have a deal then? Oh yeah, we got a deal. If I mention the beard first, I get five gold. No, the other <laughs> way around, my friend. So, hold on. I, I gotta not talk about the beard? Precisely. Hmm, but that changes things. Hmm. If you mention the beard to the captain, you owe me five gold. Hmm. Are we in agreement? <laughs> this, this really depends on his beard. If his beard is ridiculous, I'm going to say something. No, we need to strike this deal now. This is your opportunity to make five gold easily if I mention the beard. Deal. The first one who mentions it to the captain pays the other five gold? Yes. Very well. You may continue. Okay. I will also make sure that you get money if you don't mention his beard. Just don't mention his beard. <laughs> <sighs> he 
He, like, he's like, he just sighs. He's like, uh, oh, never mind. Okay, I know where Captain Mode will be right now. He never leaves his ship. Ever. He lives on that ship. Rumor has it, he was born on that ship. His ship is docked. And it's been docked there all winter. It's quite a big ship, in fairness, and... You know, if I was to have a ship, Russell's starting to, like, fade away, thinking about... Thinking about leaving life as being the, the manservant to Lord Silver Lash and becoming, like, a sailor or something. That would be the ship I'd probably like to sail on. A anyway, anyway, it's... It, it's, it's down by the, the southern part of the dock. He prefers that part because it's as far away from the castle ward as possible. Does he, uh, does he have quarrel with the castle ward? Uh, no, no, he just, you know, the further north that you are, the, the less clean, well, I say clean, but for him, it's clean, but for us it's dirty, you know, that kind of thing. He's just a dirty, rotten sailor, and he doesn't want to be anywhere near the castle ward. It's not the kind of clientele he likes. I see. Let's just say Captain Mode sometimes transports things he shouldn't. So you mean he's a Fair. pirate? No, he's a smuggler. There is a difference. Well, let's not throw words out around here like that. He's a captain of a fine ship. Sometimes he just likes to make a little bit more money. Smugglers can be very fine captains. Quite often, I find. Okay, if you've got no other business, I'll, I'll take you there now. I have to get back to to Lord Silverlash, because chances are he's panicking without me. No, I have no business. About How about you two? I, I have nothing. Thank you very much for these supplies, McGravin. So yeah. So McGravin gets up, and uh, he, he takes the lead of the party, and he starts to to take you through the streets. I wish this thing would remember where it last was. Mm, doesn't it? No, it keeps like respawning in the top left hand corner each time. So I have to Oh right, yeah, the yeah, the camera angle, yeah. Yeah, sure. I have to scroll all the way back down. Okay, so you follow Snail Street south, and McGarvin wasn't lying. Captain Maud really does prefer to be as far away from the castle ward as possible. And you find yourself off Net Street and Dock Street. Um, even though it's one of the, like, the bigger main harbors to the south, this is like a run-down dock. And there's less guard presence here, less city watch than you've, you've seen elsewhere. And you can see that McGovern wasn't lying. This is a big ship. This is a massive ship. And on the side, you can see that it's been named the Dwarven Delight. It seals on up at the moment, but its mast must easily be over 20 foot tall. This is a, you know, 20 foot tall mast and at least a, at least 30 foot long vessel itself. It's it's a big, big galley. Okay, that one, he points to the big ship. That is Captain Mode's ship. Um, he owes me a favor. So let me introduce you and after that I'll be on my way. McGarvin walks along the pier towards the ship and uh, there's a few crew members who are just working away and they, they recognize McGarvin, they've, they've worked for Captain Mode for a long time. I'm here to see Mode. That's ah, Captain Mode to you, you know. This, this, this human shirt's back. Well, can you get the captain please? <laughs> That's not my job. And he just keeps pulling this rope up and down, up and down. It's not doing anything. He just doesn't want to do the job. He's just pulling this rope up and down. 
Russell sighs and walks up the the plank of wood that's been put out so people can to board the ship. And the, the sailor shouts out and goes, Whoa, whoa, you can't just come up without permission. Well, do I have permission to board? That's not my job. <laughs> he turns to his friend, and his friend's laughing back. Oh, every bloody time. Interesting crew. Hmm. The other sailor turns and faces back on to, towards the deck. And he goes, Hey, up! Someone wants on ship. Go get the first officer. A couple of minutes pass, and the first officer's there. It's uh, it's another human, and he looks a bit, he looks a bit prim and proper. And he looks down at Russell, and he goes, "Ah, Russell, it's yo. Yeah, come on then, Russell, on you come." And Russell motions for you to follow him, and you follow the ship, and you notice that it's it's quite a th- quite a thin thread crew at the moment. Those two sailors who are at the plank probably make up half the crew that are there. The first officer is there as well, and there's there's two other crew members who are further away who seem to actually be doing work. They're, they're like waxing the wood to give it a little bit of water resistance before they leave. So we can't really find the captain anywhere. On first inspection, you can't see the captain. But uh, the first officer takes you towards these these grand doors that have, that are sort of on the side of of what would be the the upper deck where the where the wheel is, and he knocks on the door. Captain, visitors, and you just hear back. From inside the room. Arr, let them in. And he opens the door. And he motions for you to enter. I guess we enter. I uh, Actually, McGarvin probably leads the formation. So let, let him enter first. Yes, yeah. McGarvin, M- McGarvin walks in first. As you walk in, you see that this is this grand ca- cabin. And it's the captain's quarters. There's... there's there's a big table in the middle that has various rolled up scrolls which look like massive, massive maps. There's a, a little there's a little chest in, in one corner and a massive chest in the other. There's there's clothes, really fancy clothes that have been hung up onto one side of the wall. Right at the back of the room there's a, a huge window that that looks out from the, the rear of the ship. And the and the sun's just, catching the corner of it and casting a, a ray of light through and you can see that it's quite a dusty room as, as you can see the dust floating through the, the sunbeams and sat behind this this smaller table which which looks like a like a desk like this really thick wood desk is uh, is Captain Mode and he's wearing a, a captain's hat and it looks a bit out of place on him Looks like, looks like it shouldn't belong on his head, and you can see that it's a dwarf. This really small, stout dwarf who's, who's just his head is appearing above the desk, and his face is is just like a big ball of fluff. His beard is black. And it, it, it's like a toilet brush type of beard, you know? It has no formation to it. It has no style, no grace. It's just really thick strands of hair, really thick bristles that are just poking out in all directions. Out of his face. You can't see his mouth. You can't see his nose. You can just see, like, these black beady eyes above the, the beard. That's how, like, big this beard is. It covers the whole bum half of his face. His hair is thick and black as well, and again, that's all bristly, and it's just sticking out. It just looks like one big toilet brush with eyes sat behind this desk wearing a captain's hat. And he looks over at Russell. Darr, Russell, I thought you'd be here. Come to claim your favor. Yes, I'd like you to 
give passage to these adventurous, if you will. Ah, I'm sorry, but I gave the last spots away to Hilda. What an interesting coincidence. Hey, hey, Tarbin. Hmm? It, 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 uh, is this, is this I, the guy we're not supposed to mention the beard? I believe you owe me five gold. What are you, this is him? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you see, uh, you see Captain Mode's toilet br bristle brush head sort of like lean to the side around Russell to have a look. Arr, did someone mention my beard? No, no, no. We, we, we were talking to this bard, the singer next to us. He, he's, he's telling us about his adventures. Did someone mention my beard? No, no, nobody, nobody beard mentioned your beard. Uh, Tarbin! Uh. I believe you mentioned Hilda and a favor. <sighs> and you can see, like, the black beady eyes sort of, sort of, going back to, to, to being black, they, they almost had, like, a red, fiery glow to them for a moment. Hilda, hi, 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 Hilda. <laughs> what a fine woman she is, Arr. Hilda asked me to give passage to four adventurers. That would be us, uh, minus Russell, and uh, plus a uh, tiny tiefling who we seem to be missing at the moment, but she will be shortly with us. A tiefling, Arr. I've never taken a tiefling on a boat before. <laughs> there is a first time for everything, I hope. This is ridiculous. There's a beard talking in front of me. Um, and Zavargo turns around and starts playing with the toy boat in his bag. Zavargo, I, I believe it would probably be beneficial if you were to uh, keep lookout on the deck. Uh, yeah, maybe so. I can't talk to beards. <laughs> Did someone mention my beard? He looks at the dragonborn leaving. <laughs> I, I've slayed bigger lizards than him. Dragonborns are one thing, but a tieflin, a demon on my boat. Urgh, I'm not sure the lads would like that. Technically only partially demon, not entirely demon. Are you arguing with the captain? No, I would not presume to be arguing. Don't you be using those fancy words around here like presume. Is there another word you would like me to use instead? He looks at Russell. You want me? This is how you're going to use your favor. I believe he, you already said that he would not be able to use your favor. Because you already sold the places to Hilda. So, uh, any aggression you would have towards us being on the boat, please do not direct it to Russell here. And I put my hand on his shoulder. His black beady eyes just like pew, look at you up from this, from his beard, from this beard head. You lay a hand on me? No, no I'm on uh, on Russell's shoulder. Oh, it's right, sorry. He still looks at you and he's like, You speak way too much. Russell, I'll ride with you in private. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the entire city hates us. So Russell turns and goes, oh, if you will, I'd, I'd like to have a, a word with Captain Mode and Private, please. Yes, of course. And I, I bow to them both and head out. Russell closes the door behind you and he turns back to them. And he's like, oh, I told them three things, like you asked me to. I told them not to mention... Uh, sorry, I told them that you're superstitious. Arr. Oh, come on now, Captain Moe, drop the act. And he, he drops the accent. He's like, Ah, oh, laddie, you know I like to have fun with the new ones when they come in. <laughs> uh. And Russell's like, I know, I know, but you don't have to do it for me. Ah, yeah, you're right. What else you tell him? That gold and favours are equal to you. Aye, aye, that's true. See. Do you still owe me a favor? 
I think I know what it can be. Well, we'll get to that later. And three, I told them not to mention your beard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that'll be a good one to wind them up with. I always like that one. I always like that one. I knew you'd mention that to them. That's a good one. Right then. Bring them back in and I'll let the I'll let the wee buggers on my boat. So Rosa goes back to the door. He'll, he'll speak to you now. Arr, so you want passage on me boat and Hildar's been here. Hey, I can do that for ya. But on one condition. What would that be? You must help my crew. Arr. What do they need help with? The first officer will give you jobs to do in the boat. And do them you will. Arr. Is this to prepare for the voyage, or do you mean throughout the entire voyage? Throughout the entire voyage, of course. Arr. All right, fair enough. That's the that's the most growling toilet brush I've ever heard of. <laughs> Did someone mention my beard? Nope. Of, out of character. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, wait. Okay, no, I've lost track there. <laughs> Her, right, we won't be leaving tonight. Because tonight, there's no moon. And no good sailor sails without a moon to guide them by. Her. But we will leave first thing in the morning. Good, set sail at dawn. Sounds like a good idea. At dawn we sail. If you're not here by dawn... We'll be gone. <laughs> I am a poet and a, pi a, a captain of a ship. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was the DM or the captain nearly misspeaking, mis but okay. Perception check. <laughs> uh, one more thing. We do have a container that we need to take with us. Uh, it's over at Dock 23. I was wondering if we could... Uh, Right after we set sail, if we could pick that up. You want me to pick up your cargo? Yes. You want a captain to pick up your cargo? I'm sure you have deckhands who can handle this. You want my deckhands to carry your cargo? It well, actually we would... is not our cargo. It is Hilda's cargo, and you probably don't want to disagree with Hilda. Oh, Hilda's? If it's Hilda's cargo, then I, I'll, I'll make sure it's on the boat. The ship, the galley, the dwarven delight. Arr. He gives us a little, little wink. All right. Very well. We shall uh, let you prepare for the sail, and uh, we will be back at dawn. You better be, otherwise I'll be gone. Arr. I I I feel like I should be doing some kind of insight into this. I I don't know what I would be looking for, but just the R is. is <laughs> It's it's becoming suspicious. You can roll inside if you like. You totally believe that's his real accent. All right. <laughs> you think he's just like this this grizzly seasoned sea captain who's who's lived his life on the sea. Very well. And this be how we speak, isn't it, I? Ever since Treasure Island. <laughs> so what you've been knowing about Treasure Island? And a new quest was born. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the captain looks at you and he's like, well, Don't just be standing there. Go away. Very well. And I might want to get out of there. Zvarga's just standing outside and the toy boat is in pieces at his feet, but he's ignoring it. 
Is he at least trying to cover it up by standing on it when we get back? No, he's not hiding it. He's not hiding the shame at all. He's it's just there. Few the deck. So are we done? Yes, we will be back in at dawn when we sail. Dawn. Ugh. Whatever. Fine. So and here's your... there is no moon Five. tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Easy oh, should money. We, should we go help prepare for the festival? Yes. Anything else? Let's. Is there anything else you two need to take care of before we set sail in the morning? I, I look at Zavargo. Need to take care of? Not really need to take care of. But I could show you guys a good time if you were up for it. Possibly. Let's take care of business first and maybe have time for pleasure later. Hmm. Sounds good. How large was this ship? It's a gully. It's like it's got a huge twenty foot mast, and it's at least thirty foot long. Because and... th thirty foot long is a fairly small ship. Uh, it's a gully. He calls it a gully. All right. Did you say it was called the Dwarven's Delight? Yeah, uh, Dwarven Delight. Dwarven Delight. Not to be confused with the Merman's Delight. <laughs> or the other delight. What, the Turkish delight? No, the... <laughs> uh, Tarbin's mom's whorehouse. Oh, is, is that called delight as well? There's too many delights. I didn't realize. Yeah, that's what, that was my thought when you said the dwarven delights. Is, like, that's the third one already. <laughs> is, there not, is there something we don't know about these dock hands? Are they really dock hands? Or are they just handy? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, I'm just kidding. Oh, it was a joke. Uh, uh, um, they, I was wondering if they were, um... I rolled one on perception. For for hire. Uh, you could, you could hire them if... if... <laughs> not, not that armor is interested. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Okay. Um, I mean, if... Uh, Tarban has no experience to this, so Tarban wouldn't know. But it would be interesting if if uh, if either Zavargo or Arma has any experience as to being on or near a ship or a dock of some kind to see if they are actually experienced deckhands or or just people he the captain just picked up off the street. Arma would have no idea. Zavargo. Zavargo would know. Savargo, uh, do these deckhands look competent to you? They look fine to me. What? What? You got a problem with them? Not yet, but I hope I won't. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, they look fine to me. Don't look like they can carry much, but... Good. I, I trust your judgment. <laughs> <laughs> what was your intelligence again? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> okay, so these the deckhands are just going about their their job again, you know. They they're moving boxes around. They're preparing to leave. They are doing in, like small inventory checks. And the the two that are at the plank where you come on and off the boat, board on and off the boat, they they're still just standing there, lazing around. Have you met the captain then? Yes, we have. A charming fellow. Yeah, well, get off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> he turns to his friend and laughs. <laughs> I will see you in the morning. Oh, you're coming on a journey with us. Well, we are at least coming on a journey. Good luck. What do you mean by that? I offer no explanation to him. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them just, like, look at each other and start talking, wondering what he meant. <laughs> Okay, so where you are currently, it's 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 like in the lower half of Waterdeep, and it's it's in the lower half of of the harbor as well. And like this is this is like one of the shadier parts of Waterdeep. It, it's far away from the castle ward. It's far away from the sea ward. So like all the wealth and all the money, it it very rarely sees this part of town. The city watch establishment isn't very 
big here. The presence is low. They sort of leave it up to... It's a sort of like... I don't know the right word. Like regulators, if you like. The, who They sort of have these people who overlook... Not, they're not on the Brooks, they're not part of the Sea Watch. They sort of like have ownership of different areas of the Dock Ward. And as long as a little bit off the top, money wise, comes their way, they'll make sure that no trouble happens for those who pay their way, if that makes sense. Mm hmm. So there's no official police presence, but there are people who, who will act if things get out of control. And if things look like it's going to threaten the flow of money, the the protection racket, if you like, uh, for their for their boss, um, you spot two of them or that Savaga recognises. They were eyeing your party. They're a bit suspicious about Savaga having two people with them. So Zavargo does notice them. Yeah. You you recognize them, you know who they are. You've seen them around. You've you've had to pay some of your earnings to them for doing work in this part of town before. Yes. Gotcha. Hmm. Best to steer clear of them guys. Wherever we're going, we better go the opposite way. Well, I'll trust you. Lead the way. Yeah, no argument from Turban on that. So you turn around from Net Street, where, so you would have went up that way, and you have to go through sort of like the back alleys to to get to where you would have wanted to go. I'll I'll I'll, I'll ask Zavargo since I'm new in town and I don't know any of these people. I'll ask Zavargo about the uh, about the people and why we're taking this road. <sighs> Just know. If you see two of them, there's probably more around. So if we were to start something with them, and trust me, with me, they'd probably want to start something. Very well. How come people take so much offense to you? How come you ask so many questions? Because I'm curious. Well, your I'm turn. ready to answer your question. <laughs> it's that simple. Very well. I shall if try again. Go ahead. If you if you want to if you want to go up to them, by all means, I'm going to keep going this way. <laughs> you tell me that would be trouble if I go. That's fine, but I am just curious as to why people take offense to you. Hmm. You seem like such a charming person. I'm glad you can see that. Their loss. So the two people that Zavago spotted, they're like, they're like quite burly. They don't look very, you know, very refined at all. They're just wearing these like leather rags and a, a little bandana on their head. They've, uh, they've started to follow Zavago. I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on them and, uh, try to keep an eye over my shoulder to see if they start, you know, walking faster as the streets get emptier. And Armor just stays on the alert, looking for any kind of trouble or anything else. And Savargo just keeps walking. Okay, so as you keep walking through the streets, you notice that uh, they're still following you, and Another person, another burly looking man has joined the other two. Are there any uh, shops or, you know, markets or something along these roads? Yeah, there's, um, there's a few like inns, a few taverns, there's a few the Kiri Oso type of shows, uh, shows? Sh shops that sell <laughs> like just random items. There's but is there, is there something that would have like a, a stand on the outside so you wouldn't have to go in necessarily? You could actually browse some kind of wares on the outside? Uh, yeah, you can see that there's like thing, like window shopping type of thing. You can see there's fishing equipment, there's, there's 
like boat repair, boat hire, that type of thing. You know, it's, it's very much harbor themed on this on this part of the the town. I'll uh, notify my two traveling companions that uh, I want to browse some wares, and um, if I'm seeing that since I'm <laughs> paying attention and seeing that they are following us, I'm just gonna. Uh, make some idle chit chat to the salesperson and uh, make inquiries about products as so as to kill some time and see if they stop or if they keep walking. Okay. Uh, the salesperson looks at you and goes, Ooh, oh. you want a fishing rod for the Ocean Bounty Festival, don't you? Uh, yes, quite possibly. Of course like you do, of course you do. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll, I'll I'll keep an eye on the uh, on the the unwanted attention we got. They've stopped at a corner, and uh, you can see they're just waiting, what watching what you're doing. Mm. And the the shopkeeper, who's like an an old man, leathery face, a little bit of a, a stubbly salt and pepper beard going on. He reaches up for a, for one of the fishing rods. It's a it's just a six-foot fishing rod, and he, he pulls it down. He goes, I can tell you've not fished before, so I think you'd start with a beginner's set. And he puts the fishing rod in your hand. You've got no choice. It's like, it's his way of selling things. He's just like this great technique he has of putting the item in people's hands, and they just, ooh, take it. Right, I I'll, think, uh, I'll try the balance on it. I think you could catch... Hmm... Maybe it's a six pound fish for that. It's not going to win the fishing competition, but you know, it's it's a good, it's a good try for the for the Great Sea Bounty Challenge, for the first timer. What are you shopping for, Tarbin? Excuse me, Dragon. This is between me and my customer. Tarbin, we might yes. have some trouble coming up. Dragon, Dragon, please. This, I'm yeah. this talking young... to my friend right now. Uh, intimidation check. Got trouble coming up. <laughs> yes, Samargo, I am. I am aware. It is okay. Then why are you shopping for fishing poles? So as to be able to determine where we will receive it. Hmm. Arma, mm -hmm. do you see them? I see them. I'm keeping an eye out. Hmm. A smaller, thinner-looking man's joined the joined the party now. So there's four of them now? There's four. So should we make a How? break for it or deal with it? How much for this fishing pole? Oh, that six foot one. Tarbin, are you kidding me? That's Stop be... shopping for fishing oh, poles. <laughs> Get your weapons out. Very well, my... My apologies, my friend is a bit anxious. Oh, I must return to you later. Dragon, you've cost me money. On today of all <sighs> days, Dragon. He wasn't going to buy anything. He was lying to you. <laughs> hey, you four, what do you want? <laughs> all right, I guess we're dealing with this. The, the, sh I, uh, the shopkeeper I, I looks my farewell to the shopkeeper. Yeah, he, he sees who you're shouting at, and he, he recognizes them, and he just goes, oh. He takes the fishing rod from you and goes back indoors. Yes. As I hand it back, I give him a slight bow. He doesn't even stop to bow back. He just goes straight indoors. He doesn't close. He doesn't lock the door. He just closes it behind him. And you can see that he he pulls one of the the blinds down over the window. The the four people who Zavago has shouted at. They've got like these these cheeky smiles on their faces. One of them's like rolling his tongue over his teeth. I, uh, can I while I watch? While I watch Savargo, you know, uh, socially engage these fellows, I'm uh, I'm gonna slide three stones out of my pouch and just uh, do a magic stone on them. Just so you know, Tarbin, we probably could have gotten a lot further down the road had you not stopped to shop for stupid fishing poles. Is there a more advantageous place to fight further down the road? Shut up. <laughs> Okay, so they <clears throat> they slowly start walking towards you, and you can see that that one of them sort of like reached inside his leather leather overcoat, and he's 
he pulled out a dagger. The stat was the smaller man. The, the three burly men have like just got wooden clubs in their hands. That that, that were hanging loose down the side, and they've, they've they're putting it up, and them they're menacingly with their wooden clubs just batting their own palm of their hand. This, And the, the thin man, the smaller thin man, looks over to Zavago and he's like, Zavago! <laughs> what are you doing in this part of town again? Just had some business of my own. I told Thurn I was done with you. <laughs> You're never done with Thurn. And Thurn is never done with you, Zavago. You owe Thurn. I don't owe him anything. You always own Othern money. Especially if you've been doing business in the South Dock. You really want to do this here? The man looks around. He's got his hand, like, he's got a dagger in one hand and his other hand's like an open palm facing upward and he's looking around and he's going, This is my part of town. Of course I want to do it here. Uh, I, <laughs> while they're talking, I'm going to take off my sling as well. And, and uh, I pull out. Yeah, go ahead. I pull out my staff. Hold it with both hands. Can I, uh, <laughs> can I just, uh, try to interrupt Zavargo before he says, <laughs> before he says something that <laughs> Probably would make me as a player laugh, but gentlemen, gentlemen, please. We are we are truly sorry. <laughs> you will be. Is there like a leader person? Yeah, he's that's the smaller one who's been speaking. He's he's like he's not burly and as thick. He's he's all right. He's... I'm gonna shoot him in the face with my sling. All right, then <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Uh, hang on, there it is. 14? Still not a single roll over 10. <laughs> okay, so your shot, your sling, your pebble. It's a great, great reaction throw. It zips past the leader's ear, missing him. Ah, crap. Barely. He's taken by surprise, though. Whoa! Brought some friends to the fire, have you, Savargo? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like this. And he, you see me, like, he licks the dagger. Roll for initiative. Oh man! Oh, these rolls. Oh. I can't wait until I actually get any, you know, slightly higher rolls above ten. <laughs> five rolls so far. The average is five point eight. Oh well. <laughs> I'm slow. He's slower. <clears throat> Not so much those, I guess. No. Oh, man. Uh, while you're prepping, um, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a drink. Yeah, that's good. Same. I like that you're rolling for each individual.
Alright, I'm back. All right, back. Oh man, would have been much cooler if I had actually hit that guy in the first try. Uh, Chris, I take it you're prepping the next map? Did he go somewhere? He, didn't, he didn't tell me if he did. I gotta say, Tarbin, I was pretty impressed with the surprise attack. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that much of a surprise. I I I was prepping up to it. <laughs> you you just wasted no time. It's like you knew. It's like you knew something was gonna happen. <laughs> I, I'm not proficient in inside for nothing. But as of now, do they know that Arma is not in the fight? Uh, he took out his staff, so I, I assume they would presume mm. something. <laughs> Plus, to probably get the idea pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I was actually considering just... Uh, Checking with Arma if he has any ranged attacks. Uh, so we would just take down one before the fight even starts. <laughs> but uh, apparently that didn't go well. I do. You do. It's just he doesn't he doesn't tend to use them. He prefers his fists. He he prefers to be able to smell their breath when they die. Mm. Yeah. Well, unfortunately Zavargo doesn't pick up on <sighs> Diversions quite like you do, Tarbin. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I, uh, I, I think that uh, <laughs> on the uh, introduction to this fight, Zavargo acted pretty much as I thought he would. Should um, Zamargo take offense at that? Ar Armor should have like snuck off to the side. I just wasn't really thinking about it. Just like casually walked away. Oh well, <laughs> next time. I, I assume since you're a, a, a monk of the dawn, you won't be picking the way of the shadow. Nope. <laughs> I, I know this may be a surprise, but I'm gonna be picking the way of the sun soul. What? <clears throat> no, the way of the shadow has that uh, teleportation yeah. thing. So <laughs> that yeah, would have been good for surprise attacks. But yeah, pretty badass. I I was just like, if I didn't do this one, I would probably do that one. Mm -hmm. I just felt like going this way with this character. Yeah, no, that's that's good. It's a, it's a good character. I like it. I uh, I just uh, the uh, the way 
looked at the comments on uh, on the attacks just made me realize that uh, the uh, a group that I DM, there's a, a guy who plays a monk of the shadow, and and he's actually during evenings uh, and any scouting missions on during nights, he's just using that shadow walk constantly. Nice. They were getting out of a basement last session we had, and he was like, uh, everybody else walks, and I'll just zoom, 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 I'm out. <laughs> Where did that Chris go? All right. There we go. Yeah, I was making a cup of tea. Right then, let's see. So, Tarbin, your sh your slingshot shot flew mm -hmm. past the ear of the bandit leader and actually went through a window of one of the shops behind him. That consider that a warning. You call that a warning? <laughs> he licks his dagger again, and he nudges one of the big burly men to his right. I believe this guy has a iron deficiency. Go and get them. So one of the big burly <laughs> men sort of like just charges towards you, Tarbin. They were, they, you know, they were, they were thirty yards away anyway. So it, it takes up his full. Full movement to get there, and he's, by the time he gets to you, he's a he's a bit out of breath. But he he's not fit. He's big. He's fat. <laughs> but he's ready to attack. He lifts up his club. I'm going to be unconscious before this round is over. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I just need to change. I just need to add something in. I accidentally armed them all with scimitars. Oh, by the way, we're on the city map, if you intended to switch. I was going to switch, but we'll just stay on the city map. Stay on the city map. Right. I'll try and describe the action as best I can. Fair enough. Oh, well, that's annoying. There we go. So he swings out with his club. Mm -hmm. is, is that a three to hit? <laughs> yeah, he totally misses. He swings and he's so out of breath that, like, he can't even aim. <laughs> he just swings and hits air. Um, armor, it's your go. Alright, and I'm, I'm assuming I'm standing right next to this guy. Yeah, so that was the first bandit. He's ran, he's within attack range. The rest, uh, the other two burly looking bandits with the clubs and the bandit leader, they're still 30 yards away. Ah, uh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm guessing that's 30 oh, feet. feet. 30 feet, sorry, yeah. Okay, cool. Just clarifying. All right, I'm going to spend a key point and take the uh, dodge action as a bonus action. Uh, and then I'm just going to 
run straight past this guy directly in front of the other three and um, take a swing at the the uh, small guy with my staff. Okay. Ah. Uh, and I'm assuming the other guy gets an attack of opportunity on me. Uh, I'll say no. I'll, I'll say because he's so burly, he's out of breath. He's not going to be able to. All right. To get uh, it's a twelve. Guy. A twelve to hit the small guy. Oh, the the small the bandit leader. Yeah. Okay, you miss. Uh, and then I'd already taken the dodge action, so as my bonus action, and, and that's it. Okay. Uh, Zavago, it's your go. I'm sick and tired of dealing with you guys. And he goes into a rage with his bonus action. Uh oh. And he pulls out his great axe and swings it straight down at this little leader guy. Wow. Yes, you hit. And you, like, you slice off a, like a layer of skin down the, the bandit leader's left arm. He tried to, like, dodge to get out the way, but he didn't do it in time. And you sliced, like, a clear, clear slice of his left arm out. It could easily be, like, like a piece of bacon. It's that kind of, like, thickness. And he's just like, ah! I'm sorry, really quick. It should be plus two damage as well because of the rage. I haven't put that okay. into my sheet That's yet. That's all right. Next is Torben. Uh, could I find a point uh, where as many of them as possible are within 20 feet of said point? Yeah, so they're 30 feet away and... There are the bandit leaders there, and then either side, like either side of the bandit leader, there's two other bandits, and Savargo is pretty much within them as well. So, and I'm there too. Oh, and Tobin's there as well. Yeah, sorry. Armor. Armor, sorry. Oh right, they are there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just you and the out of breath bandit who tried to attack you earlier. There, everyone else is sort of like fighting each other close. <laughs> well, shit. Uh... Yeah, I'll. Uh... This this is gonna feel so weird. Uh... Fuck it. I'm gonna cast sleep on a point so that the fat guy next to me falls asleep. Nothing else. I mean, if I can get any of the other. Uh, it's going to be a point, and then a 20 feet radius from that point. Um, it's going to be all creatures in that is, are affected by the sleep spell. But um, I'm going to try to primarily get the, the the fat guy next to me. And if there's uh, any others, then any other enemies, then that would be a bonus. Okay. But I, but I guess they're 30 feet away? Yes, they're 30 feet away. All right, then it's, it's just the fat guy then. Okay. I didn't mean to roll again, I'm sorry. Uh, hang on. Where is the thing? I haven't cast sleep with this character sheet before, so let's see. All right. Uh, basically, uh, starting with the creature that has the lowest current hit point uh, hit points, each creature affected by the spell falls unconscious until the spell ends. The sleeper takes damage, or someone uses an action to shake or slap the sleeper awake. Subtract each creature's hit points from the total before moving on to the creature with the next lowest hit points. A creature's hit points must be equal to or less than the remaining for that total. Uh, a creature's hit points must be equal to or less than the remaining total for that creature to be affected. So if he has 19 or less health, he would fall asleep. Yep. So that out of breath, burly bandit, <clears throat> just lets out this big yawn. Mm, I feel sleepy. <laughs> and he like he falls asleep and he, like 
he just leans forward and he rests on you for a bit before slipping off and falling on the floor. All right. He is asleep. And I'll use my bonus action to cast Hex on the uh, leader. Okay. Uh, well, actually, that depends on the rules, I guess, because they're both level one spells. So if we're going by the book, I can't actually cast that. The uh, oh, right crit you. critical role has the house rule that you can cast below level two spells. But how do you want to do that? <laughs> Uh, if we do it, it would work both ways, so any character I had make would be able to do it as well. If you're fine with that, then we'll, we can do it. Sure. Alright. Alright then. Um... Right. All of my spells let's use. No, not all. I, I still have one. <laughs> it's fine. Um... But yeah, that's uh, that's my turn. Uh, next is one of the big burly bandits with a club. He turns to Savago. He knows Savago, and he, he wants to get a hit in on his so he can go back to the pub and tell his friends he's managed to get a good hit on Savago. He swings out with his club. Ooh. Shot at me. Damn, son. <laughs> it's an amazing hit on Savago. His club, it's like this guy has hit a home run. He swings out. He's full weight. Is behind the swing. His momentum carries this club flying forward, and it cracks Savago right in the side of the head, and it dazes Savago a little bit, and he goes prone. He's off balance. He need so he he goes down on his knees to try and regain his balance, and it hits him for. How do you want to do critical rolls? Do you want to? Double the damage, or I did just double, double the damage. Uh, the dice. Okay. Yeah. Just... Quick question. Yeah. Quick question. Sure. Now this is a club, so that's bludgeoning damage, correct? Yes. Okay. Rage grants resistance to bludgeoning. Okay then. <laughs> bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Actually. Okay, you take no damage, but you still no go prone. It's just with it being a critical okay. hit. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll go there. That. Yeah. So you take no damage, uh, but the it's enough force that it, it does rock you a little bit. But he has resistance, not immunity, so he should basically just be taking half damage. So. Uh, ah, right. Yes, I've got mixed up there. Okay, so you're half of a critical. So we'll do. So you take two damage. There you go. I think you should be able to click the, the weapon name, it'll roll the damage for you. Ah, I did not know that. Handy. So, two damage. Uh, next is the other burly looking bloke, and he looks inspired. He has been inspired by his friend here in like a home run on Savarga's skull. And he wants in on this as well. So he's gonna, he's gonna swing for the fences. <laughs> wow. but, uh, he hits, but he doesn't have like the He's force. Inspired. Yeah, but he doesn't have the force or the, or the momentum behind his swing to to be as as useful as his friend's swing. Uh, so he only does one damage. Uh, next is the bandit leader. He is he's like trying to like hold his arm. He's taking his jacket off. And he's wrapping it around his arm that's just been sliced down. And that, that'll that be his turn. He's too preoccupied trying to to get his arm under control. Uh, 
and then hit the other bandits. He's still asleep. <laughs> uh, next is armor. All right, I'm gonna swing at the uh, the bandit leader with my staff, and then I'm going to uh, bring my knee up and just kind of knee him between the legs. Oh, All right, well, twenty three with the staff. Yeah, that connects. Uh, it's five damage. <clears throat> so your staff comes down, and he doesn't see it coming because he's he's trying to patch up his arm still, and it smacks him right in the the right hand side, almost winding him, and he's like, oh! But it grabs his attention just in time to see your knee strike coming in, and he just takes a step back, avoiding it. Savago, your go. Out of curiosity, is it going to take an action for me to get up from being prone, or just half of my speed? I'm going to say an action in this case. Okay. Well then. If it, hadn't, if, sorry, if it hadn't been like a critical hit, I would have said half your movement. Yeah, with, yeah, I got you, but it was a pretty good hit, so I'm pretty much knocked on my back, right? Yeah, you're like you're dazed saying? and sort of, yeah, prone. <laughs> okay. Well... Then Zavargo is going to have to go ahead and take this turn to go ahead and regain his composure. Okay, Tarbin. Um, I'm going to sling a pebble at the uh, at the leader. Okay. Finally, something that might hit. <laughs> I take it 17 hits, whereas I see. The magic pebble flies through the air towards the bandit leader. Who uses his dagger to deflect it to one side. Just, this guy. just in time. It was close. It would have hit if he hadn't uh, used his parry. I see. A lucky move, huh? I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna inspire my bonus. Use my bonus action to inspire Zavargo. Oh wait, no. I'll take that back. That's my fault. It's only against oh. melee attack, not ranged attack. So you oh, do. You, you do hit him. Oh. You do. Excellent. Hit him. <laughs> That's the. Uh... Damage from the pebble, and since I hexed it, damn, jeez. So this pebble, this it's pebble, pebble, yeah, it's a magic, magic pebble. It is a magic pebble, actually. <laughs> this uh, <laughs> this pebble flies through the sky. Magic, and hits the bandit leader. Right in the base of the ne the neck, just missing, just missing like the main artery that runs up there. But it's enough force in it to like it's like a really strong bee sting type of thing. He's just like ah, ah damn it, and he holds his neck. All right, um, yeah, I'll use my uh, bonus action after that to uh, inspire Zavargo. Okay. My dead friend, it is time to finish this. So uh, you get couldn't a, agree a, more. <laughs> you gain a one d six inspiration die. You can use for your attacks if you need to, not for the damage, but for the attack or oh, yes. any okay. saving throws. I think as well, or skill checks. Wow. Okay. So one of the burly bandits, I can see that his his leader. Sort of like the the capo, if you like. He's getting absolutely bludgeoned by flying magic pebbles. He's had his his left arm sliced into a thin piece of bacon by the dragonborn, and he's just like, oh no! If he hadn't hit Zavargo for a home run before, he probably would have just turned and fled by now. This isn't. He's not getting paid enough to put up with this crap. But he he feels like he can put another good hit in on Zavargo to make for a great story back at the pub later on. So he swings for Savago again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So this is just like this is just like petals landing on Sephardgo at the moment. Just, they're getting really good hits in, but they, they just don't have the force or the power to back them up. And hits you for one damage. <laughs> what was that? Uh, intimidation roll? No. Oh. Well, fine. Okay. Now. For a moment, it looks like the bandit that just hit you was, was gonna, like, drop his club and run away. But his friend next to him goes, Don't worry, I'll give him it a go. And he swings as well. Uh, I just put the inspiration text there just in case. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, he swings and he misses. Next is the bandit leader. And he's just like, Oh, Savago, I'm going to stab you right in your eye. And he, uh, he swings, he swings out? No, he lunges forward with his, with his dagger. Sorry, I forgot to put dagger in as well. It's all new to me, don't judge. I was about to say, that's a really long, intensive pause there. <laughs> He's charging up. It's in slow motion. So he lunges forward with the dagger. But he's, again, he's just too preoccupied with his arm and like, like this whelp that, that's growing on his neck from where the magic pebble hit him. It's like this, this lump now, just... He's just like, ah, you bastard. The other bandit, who's lying now with Tar Tarbin's feet, just, he's still out there. He's having nice dreams. He's, he's thinking about a life of, of just being a sheep herder. Next is Armit. All right, I'm going to turn to the one that hasn't been able to hit anything um, and swing at him <laughs> okay. with my staff. And then I'm going to try to punch him in the face after that. <laughs> so was that at one of the burly bandits? Yeah. yeah. Yep, one of the bandits. Yeah. So your staff, it doesn't hit him. Um, somehow you've you've swung at him, and despite his size, you've you've swung and you've missed. But your your uh, your unarmed strike connects right into his stomach. And he reels over forward, slightly winded. Oh, oh gotta bring me breakfast up. Um, and then I'm, I'm that's gonna end my turn. Savago, you'll go. I told you he shouldn't have picked a fight here right now. This is gonna be the end of you. And he swings once again with his great axe. Straight at him, ready to end this all. And we're going to go ahead and add in my inspiration. So that adds in a 1d6. Mm -hmm. Ow! I don't feel like I inspired very well now. <laughs> it's something. So you swing down with your great axe, and the bandit leader sidesteps it. He sees, you know, he just sees this attack coming. He sees the, the huge, powerful downward arc of this axe coming. And unlike in the movies where he might have just like moved forward or backward, he moves to the side to get out of the way of this giant object falling from the sky. And you miss. Uh, next is Tobin. Let's uh, do the last magic pebble then. That would be a 16. Who was that at, sorry? The, uh, the leader. Okay, the leader. This magic pebble flies towards the leader again. 
and zips past his ear, just like the first one, and it goes to the window behind him again. Crap in a handbasket. Uh, muttering slightly under his breath, uh, Tarbin's going to take out three more pebbles and uh, cast another magic pebble on the three as a bonus action. Okay, sorry, I should have checked before we even started. Has everyone updated their character sheets because you're all level two? I have at least. Yeah? Yep, cool. I have a whopping 14 hit points now. Tank, 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 <laughs> tank, 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 tank. But yeah, um, yes, that's uh, after doing the bonus action, that's, that's my turn. Okay, um, the bandit that managed to hit a home run the first time around, he's going to spring again, Ed, but he's he's seeing that his, like, his shots at, uh, at Zavago just aren't doing much at all. And this, if anything, it seems to be making this Dragonborn angrier. So he turns his attention to armor and swings his club. hits. Alright. And he hits armor right in the side of the arm with his club and he can see that, that this has done more this is much much more effective against the against the human than it is on the dragonborn and he's just like <laughs> very pleased with himself. Um his bandit friend seeing this decides to do something similar and he turns and looks at armor as well, and it's like, don't worry, I'll hit him as well. And he swings his club. That misses. But much like the rest of the battle, he continues to miss. That's what we call a tarban roll right there. <laughs> well, where the second roll's amazing. Yes. The bandit leader. He's glaring. It's a Vargo. He's like, Oh no, you bloody dragon bones. Don't like being stabbed. <laughs> and he lunges forward again with his dagger. But he just... <laughs> he can't hit. He can't hit at all. His arm and his neck. It's, it's just too much of a distraction for him. Uh, the other bandit, he's still asleep. He is drooling a little bit now, and its armors go. Ah, uh, I'm gonna. Is is the one that hit me the same one that I already hit? There's right, several on you now, I think. Yeah, the the first, the one that hit you is the one that hit the home run on Zabargo, and he hasn't okay. been hit yet. The one that swung and missed, he has been hit. He was the one you hit previously. All right, I'm going to attack the same one I hit before. Okay. Uh, with my staff. There we go. There we go. Nice. That's a good hit. That hits. Still crappy damage rolls. That's six damage. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just going to attack him again. I'll, uh, again, try to punch him in the face since that worked last time. <sighs> Not this time, though. Okay, oh, so yeah. you, you, like, you... Stab out with your staff right into this <clears throat> bandit's stomach, and it's a good hit. And it reels him over, totally winding him. And he's clutching his stomach, and it looks like he, he might be bringing up his breakfast like he had warned before. Uh, but a stroke of good luck is as he's leaning forward, clutching his stomach, your follow up attack, your fist swings at where his head was, but actually goes over and hits the, hits the air. All right. And that's it. So I'll go. You'll go. All right. Really quick. It's been more than 10 turns since I last went into a rage, which means my rage is now over. Cause it's no, over. no, it's not more than 10. It's more than 10 turns, rounds. but not more than 10 rounds. So, Is it 10 rounds? Yeah. Because it just says one minute. It just says one minute. Each each turn is only like six seconds, if that. Yeah, and it... it and everybody's turns are basically at the same time, so it's it's basically like 10 okay, rounds. Okay, so I'm still good in my rage? I was oh, just yeah. making sure. Cause... Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, that's that's perfectly fine with me. You turned your attention away from me! Fine! And he picks up the... Well, he attempts to pick up the bandit thug who 
got a home run on him so he could hit the bandit leader with him instead. All right, I like this. <laughs> improvised weapon? <laughs> yes, improvised weapon. Which means that's a... Sh- I don't have a thing set up for an improvised weapon. I guess the DM would decide first if you can just lift him <laughs> up or need some kind of strength check. Yeah, first of all, do a... Uh, sh- yeah, do a strength check. Ow! Well, whatever. I'm going to roll against it with a dexterity. If yours is higher, you've grabbed him. Oh, good. Yeah. So you grab this burly man. He he's too much of a big target to get out of the way, and you've just grabbed him. I I guess that a uh, it, he would count as something of a warhammer. Um, <laughs> yeah. We we'll do bludgeon damage and do it as a d four plus two. Wouldn't it be plus his uh, strength modifier, or is that just two? Oh, I was just guessing it was two. What? What's your um, strength? My my strength modifier is four. Okay, plus four. Uh, roll to hit. Uh, roll to hit. Roll to see if I hit first. Yes, yeah, please. I assume that would be just the d twenty plus the strength, and not with the. <gasps> there you go. Oh, Never mind. Wow. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so two d four plus four then. Yes, please. Two d four plus four. So you pick this burly bandit up, and you swing at... Was it the bandit leader? Yes. Yeah. And you swing at the bandit leader, and you knock the bandit leader on his ass. But you also see that you've actually, like... You've knocked head to head. So the burly bandit's head's knocked into the bandit leader's head. And the bandit you've just swung has been knocked unconscious. And is he's nice. out. He's out for the light. He's gone. The bandit leader is on his ass. Okay. Uh roll intimidation. <laughs> Never mind. Next up is Tobin. Uh, I'm going to start swinging my sling and uh, just uh, tell the leader. Uh, if you stay down and don't get up, we might let you live. And I'm going to hold my action. And uh, if he stands up and actually, if he does anything threatening, then I'm going to let loose. OK, do a persuasion check. Persuasion is there. No, that was performance, sorry. <laughs> uh, you, that's a persuasion. There and you, you start doing figures of eight with your sling, and you do it under your shirt, <laughs> under your armpit. And... Okay, yeah, the, the bandit leader, <clears throat> he nods, and he just stays on the floor. I wasted a 19 on a wrong roll. And we never saw a good roll from Tarbin again. Nope. But yeah, um, that's my turn, I guess. Actually, what shape do my companions look like? I mean, are either of you badly hurt? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good. I'm still at 17 hit points. All right, then. I'll keep swinging. Okay, so the bandit who hasn't hit anyone yet and was, like, poked in the stomach with it, the monk's death... He turns and starts to run away. I can't, um, I'm, I'm going to let him run. I can't really do anything to that anyway. Yeah. 
bandit leader's sat on the floor. He's got one hand on his neck where the magic pebbles hit, and there's like a great big bruise forming there now. It's, it's pretty big. He's finding it hard to move his, move his neck, and his left arm, despite his best efforts of making a bandage out of his leather leather overcoat, it's it's still like bleeding bad. He he knows he's defeated. <laughs> Savago. I hate you so much. Don't worry, the feeling's mutual. You better tell Thurn that I'm done with him. I better not see any of you after me anymore, or any of my friends. I'll tell him. But I can't promise he'll listen, you know how he is. Hmm. Do I? The guys, the bandit is like breathing heavily, he's... He's worn out, he's, he's really fed up, and he's like, are you gonna let me go or what? Ha! Nothing quite so simple. And Zavargo goes up to him and picks him up and drops him in a barrel. Okay. <laughs> and then kicks the barrel down the street. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. Okay, so this bandit leader is rolling down the street in this barrel. His, his head's just sticking out of the top, and you can see like it's it's just spinning around. And some of the shopkeepers have, have come out of their doors and they're looking, and they can see the barrel going around. And some of them are daring to even smile at this because they know that they're not going to have to pay protection money during the the Ocean Bounty Festival today. Uh, so we had one who is unconscious, we had another who ran away, one is rolling in a barrel, and the fourth one is asleep, right? That is correct. <laughs> you, the, the combat, as far as I'm concerned, is over. All right. Uh, Tarbin's going to stow away the magic pebbles back into the pouch and the sling back into the belt, and then just uh, sit down gently on the sleeping giant. And uh, I'm just going to... Tap him really gently on the on the chin, while while sitting on him. Just <laughs> good sir. It he was time to wake. He I'll wakes up, up next to him. He wakes up a little bit startled from his dream. Go, go. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy. Oh. Oh. Hello there. Oh. You you seem to have fallen asleep. He he, he looks up. He's like, yeah, I was I was a sheep herder farmer. Did you sleep well? Yeah, it's best night's sleep I've ever had. You're welcome. Oh, by the way, your friends have abandoned you. What? So, uh, you probably want to pick better friends next time. Oh, who's the only job I could get? Oh, I'm sure you can do better. What do you mean? There are loads of fine jobs to do. You don't have to be a, a thug like this. Do something better with your life. Life is short. And I tap him on the chin. Oh, but it's, it's all I've known. No one's ever told me I can do better before. There's always time to learn more. You really think so, mister? <laughs> I do, and I get up from him. <laughs> oh, oh. Maybe I could really become a sheep herder. Zavargo, I think it's time to go now. Mm hmm. I'll follow wherever we're going. Okay, so the sleeping thug, he slowly gets to his feet and he just he wanders away from. It looks like he's heading towards the south gate out, out of Waterdeep, and you, you can just hear him murmuring to himself, so, Yeah, sheep farmer. I'll get myself a dog and I'll herd some sheep and I'll. I'll yeah, and he just he's, he's walked off. And... He will probably be eaten by the wolves before the night is done. <laughs> Have some faith in the man, Tarbin. <laughs> faith is for fools. Uh, we were heading to... Where were we heading to? Oh, yeah. Um, Arma, where are we? Preparations for the festival yes. that the monks asked us. Lead the way. I um I don't think the monks said whether they were doing the preparations at the 
temple or where. I don't like it. I don't think I had direct, exact directions for that. Okay, so um, what the monks were asking you to do yesterday was uh, isn't going to happen until tomorrow. Hang on. So he promised to do something at the top time when we'll be on the high seas. Yep. <laughs> they said they would they would do the preparations today. There wasn't any. I I believe they said something about doing some preparations today. Yeah. I guess we're heading back to the um, heading back to the temple then to figure out if they're going to do any preparations today and if we can help something because we're getting the fuck out. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so yeah, what happens tomorrow is the, is the blessing of the seas, where at the at the crack of dawn, in fairness, it's all the various religious groups from within Waterdeep come down to the docks, and they they just you know they bless the travelers as they go, and they bless the ships, and they it's that kind of thing, and families get together. Um. Okay, so are you just going to leave the unconscious? Thug on the floor. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so because his uh, friends will probably come to. I mean, we can I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna stabilize him. him. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna relieve him of any. Ones, well. Yeah, I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna loot him, cash one, and, and relieve him of any um, valuables that he is not making good use of. <laughs> okay, so you search for his uh, his his pockets, which are which have like dirt and lint in it. He doesn't wash his clothes very often. And you can feel that there's loose change in there and you pull your hand out and in your hand there's just there's a handful of 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 copper coins. There's about twelve. Alright. He isn't he isn't the one that gets to keep the money. That would be the bandit leader. He's just there as like the intimidation. Alright. Perhaps next time we should uh, empty the leader's pocket before we let him go. If nothing else, then Zavargo can use it to pay off some debt you seem to owe. Nope. Don't owe any debts. Thern is well, just a lot of trouble. Very well. More cash for us then. Uh, I'm, I want to do. I want to check that the unconscious man is. You know, he's just unconscious and not actually dying. Yeah, he's he's just unconscious. He's not dying. All right. He's still very well. Breathing. Darba still makes sure that he's, you know, uh, breathing and and not dying. So you're such a good yeah. man. Too good. You're going to be slaying the beast, and Tarban's going to be like, "No, my friends, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot destroy such a he, fine animal. He can farm sheep." <laughs> okay, so you make your way back. Back up the roads towards uh, the castle ward and the monastery or the the spires, sorry, where you began the morning. And you can see that preparations have, have hit up a step. You know, it's 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 seven o'clock now, and most people are awake. This is when businesses would would start to open anyway. Um, the streets are starting to get a little bit more active and there are people pushing carts into position ready and there's people pushing barrels and stock and shop owners are, are more active outside like the like the fisherman was earlier and as you keep walking you you check over your shoulder and you can see that in fact the shop owner you were speaking to earlier the fisherman guy the fishing rod guy has came out of his shop and some of his shop owner friends have came out of their shop as well and they're looking over the prone body of, of the thug, you've, the bandit thug you've left in the middle of the street, and and you're not too sure, but it looks like with the sole of their foot, they're, they're pushing him and maybe just having a, a slight little kick as a way to get a bit of revenge on him. Um, but the Ocean Bounty Festival is is really starting to to come into life now. It, it's not ready to start. It doesn't start till a little bit later in the morning, but... You can tell that people are preparing. There's a there's a buzz happening now around the streets. But we'll have to wait the next week to find out <laughs> what happens. All right. Ooh. 
another good another good session yeah, yeah. good thank you i thought i'd end it there because my kid usually wakes up a little bit now and then i didn't want to get too far ahead without law being here yeah All right.